All right, it's time for an updated look at our pasture, and we're going to talk about a call from the governor. Hey friends, welcome back to the Renewed Homestead. So a call from the governor, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, got a stay of execution. You know, life on the farm, you know, we've learned death just happens. You know, we've lost some rabbits, we've lost some chickens, lost some kitties. It's just part of it. Well, when it comes to meat birds, you know, you raise them up, you lose a couple when they're, when they're shipped, yeah, okay, that, that happens. But they have an end date. They've got an expiration date. Well, the governor called. I'm such a hardened farmer, I saved a meat bird. <laughs> meat ginger. <laughs> you wanna say hi? You wanna say hi? And why, and why is ginger still here? Well, okay, so she got hurt, and I'm not exactly sure how she got hurt, but you can see her poor little beak. So. Make sure she can see, can see here. Yep. Okay. So you can see her poor little beak, something happened to her and I had gone out and there were a whole bunch of chickens <laughs> picking on this chicken in the corner. And I went down and she was just all beat up. So I grabbed her, it's okay, hey, 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 it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> so I grabbed her and we ended up nursing her back to health for about three weeks. And where was she? She was in the house. Well, you know, it was cold out and, you know, she needed... We, 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 we needed to check on her. We really didn't think she was going to make it. She I was, didn't think she was going to make she it. She was pretty she was beat bad. up. She couldn't really eat because her beak's offset and... She was a mess. And so it took about three weeks and then we put her in with some of the younger chicks that were, they were kind of in between. They were too old to be in the brooder, but they weren't old enough to go into the... Uh, main coop. Adults, yeah. So we put her in with them. She did really well. And when it came time to process, I just, I couldn't do it. And we had talked about saving one for eggs anyways. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it worked out. It worked out. So, well, but she's actually really nice. She's yeah. actually the friendliest chicken we have. Well, and, and true confessions, we actually have two of the, the uh, ginger broilers. Well, the other one was too small. Yeah, she was just she just grew small, which typically, you know, if we're raising them for eggs to see if we could grow our own meat birds, that's not the best, I, that's not the ideal conditions because you don't want to car carry on the traits of having a small bird, but she was too small to process, so Ginger and G2, as we call her, wherever she is, she's off foraging somewhere, but yes. But the other thing too is they're our nicest chickens. They actually come up to us. The other one's just, as you can hear, and away they go. Yes. So, anyway, but we want to take you up and and Hi. take a look. <laughs> she's Ginger. scared. She's scared of Belle. Oh. Belle's right there. She doesn't like Belle. And Belle doesn't care at all. But mm -mm. anyway, we're going to go up and look at the pasture, show you what there is and there is and what there is an absence of. So, let's go take a look. All right, welcome up to the pasture. Now, when we bought this place, the previous owner said, you're not gonna grow anything on that. Don't even try. We've tried, we've seeded, we've fertilized. Sorry, the bugs are bad. Um, she's like, just get used to it being red clay and, and whatever. So we're like, well, there's gotta be something we can do. And so, you know, we got some big rolls of hay. Somebody gave them, like, they gave them to us? Oh, yeah, we got them rotten really, hay, yeah. Rotten no, hay. they gave us the rotten hay, yeah. yeah. so we rolled that out on here. And since then, in the past two years, you know, we've had sheep and goats and cows across it. Just recently, we uh, ran our meat birds through here in their, chi their chicken tractor. So we've had a lot of poop. We've had some time. And it's really healing. I mean, we just recently saw mushrooms on here. That dry spell pretty well knocked out the, um, the mm -hmm. mushrooms, which that, that happens, not a big deal. But there's life back in the soil and it's looking really, really good. Uh, 
Um, well, and there are, so we're seeing pioneer species. So somebody looking at this without a trained eye is gonna be like, well, that still looks unhealthy. And, and yes, there's still a lot to heal, but this was clay. Nothing was growing on this. There was no life at all. We now have pioneer species. We now have some grasses. We've got a little bit of clover peeking through. Um, and one thing that we're not seeing, we had a whole bunch of broom sedge in here last year. We've got some on the outside of the fence and the goats might have eaten some of it, but last year the goats wouldn't touch this stuff, neither would the sheep. Nope. Um, and I know the cows <laughs> won't eat it. So, uh, so we're seeing a whole lot of broom sedge on the other side of the fence, but in the pasture, we're not seeing broom sedge this year. So we know healing's going on. There's now life back here. Um, and we're just gonna continue to rotate the animals through. We'll put the hay down um, in the winter time. We'll run them through. And then we've got another batch of meat birds coming yep. um, next week. Um, so uh, this will be actually be our first foray into selling pastured poultry. So if you all want some pastured poultry and you're not too far away, um, definitely let us know and That's... you can get some pastured poultry from us. They'll be ready late? Mid-November. -mid Mid-November. Mid-November. Mid -November. So. But I know the question will come up too. What's what's staked up behind me here? <laughs> well, like my great grandfather, he would be plowing his field. Not that I plow in Ohio. And Grandma said that her dad would jump off the tractor if he saw a little tree growing up out in the field. He'd <laughs> dig that up and go plant it along the road. So that little uh, black walnut had volunteered and was coming up in one of our uh, compost piles. So it's down here, but it serves a purpose there. Yes. You know, that's gonna, as that grows, it'll provide shade for the, the cows and whatever animals are in here. Because one of the things we have to kind of juggle is when it's a really, really hot day, or we know there's gonna be a lot of rain. Or we try, heavy snow in the winter. Yep, heavy snow. We try to jockey them around to get in one of the paddocks that has several trees, so it offers them more protection, so. Sissy. There aren't any in this pasture, so now there is. Yeah, in this paddock. So our lower paddock, pasture yes. is the where the, the really bad part, of, you know, really bad uh, soil is, dirt is. Mm -hmm. So we have to put trees in um, to protect the animals from the elements. Um, so if we have like the bad storms that have just come through here, we had the animals up there. You see a, a grove of pine trees up there. Um, so they're protected. We don't have that down here. So we're working on that. That's right. And what's better than a free tree? Right, nothing. <laughs> well, I'm sure there's some things, well, there, but yeah. yes. But, but just wanted to take you along and show you. So don't be afraid um, to buy a property that needs some work. If you're not afraid to, of, of rolling up your sleeves and getting your elbows dirty, um, bad land can be healed and it can be healed with ruminants. So don't be afraid of it. Right. And we're going to just continue to do what we've been doing. And, you know, we're nowhere near what Greg Judy and Joel Salatin's pastures look like. But, you know, in a few years, we should be. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting, making, making good time. But, um, yes. yeah, I, like I said, three years ago when we got on here, this was clay and that was weeds that were so tall we couldn't even see what yeah. we had bought. Yeah, this so. was all in here was dead, guys. Yeah. There was nothing was grown. Yep. Nothing. Not even a weed. Yep. So well, anyway. or I should say, well, what's anything's a weed where you don't want it to grow. We want well, things true. to grow in that's here, true. but yes. <laughs> that's true. The goats will eat it, but the weeds. The goats will yes, eat the weeds. Yes. But anyway, so that's uh that's just a quick update and there is still time to get comfrey in the ground. Uh, your time's getting real short if you want comfrey, and mm -hmm. of course while you're there, you're going to need a hoary hoary knife to uh, dig that dirt up to get your your uh, yes. comfrey root in, and you might as well pick up some deodorant and some uh, rooting hormone. And for those of you who have ordered, please know that we really do appreciate that. That helps us out. You know, we we have commercials that run during our our uh, videos. Mm -hmm. We don't get any money for that. <laughs> So. We get some, but nothing <laughs> like pennies, well. yeah, yeah. pennies so, right now. So. so what we're saying is we really appreciate your support and we are praying for you and we ask for your prayers as well. And uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, hello to Pastor Matt 
Yeah. We actually officially joined um, our church today. We've been going there for eight months, eight, nine months. About that. About that, yeah. yeah. So we officially joined and became members today. Oh, yeah, we're really excited about that. Good, good people, good, good people. We tried yeah. several churches and, and then we felt at home there, so. Yes. Now so we're now we're official. Now we're official. That's right. So <laughs> anyway, hope you are all well and and like I said, we're always praying for you. So uh, take care. God bless. We'll see you all on the next video. And go in peace. Go in peace and serve the Lord, as my old pastor, <laughs> Lutheran pastor, used to say. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye.